Okay, so this is a quick walkthrough of how to use Google Forms with validation. So I'm going to take you through some basics of just creating a Google Form and what that structure looks like first. You can do this in a browser on your desktop if that's easier. Desktop, laptop, doesn't matter. You can also do it in a browser on your iPad. For iPad specific instructions, there is a YouTube video that I will share with you uh, for creating Google Forms on the iPad. So what we're going to do is we are going to go into your Google Drive and then we're going to click on New and choose More if you don't see it and choose Google Forms. So there are two parts to a Google Form. There are the questions, which you're going to ask, and then there are the responses, which you would collect in a spreadsheet. So right now, this is going to just be empty. What I usually do is create a spreadsheet for this form and it's going to name it. You can name it the same thing as your form. Um, you probably want to leave responses on there and then hit create. So now in my drive, I'm going to have an untitled form and I'm going to have a spreadsheet. So that should be showing up here. So here's my untitled form and here's my untitled form responses. So here's the form purple icon, the spreadsheet with the responses is green. If you are using this for a digital breakout EDU, you're almost never even going to look at this untitled form responses because you're just using the form as a tool and you don't really care what the responses are. Um, you're just using it to guide your students. So I'm going to go back to my form and I'm going to go into my questions. So anytime I'm using this for a digital breakout EDU, I am going to obviously name it. You would name it something very specific and then you can put some kind of text in here as a description. If there are specific instructions you want your students to have as part of the digital breakout, you can do um, like a text description by doing add title and description and you can type some text into this area. So if you need things to be reminders or if you are using this as part of a clue, then you can go ahead and type in this description and this text. You can also put in images and video. So I can upload an image. So say I wanted to drag a picture in, I could drag a picture from my desktop or if I already have an image in Google Drive, I could go through my drive or if there's an image online that I want to search grab by the web address, I can do that. So those are all ways that you can get an image in. So here's my image here. I'm going to actually trash that. Uh, you can also add a video. So if part of your digital breakout needs to be uh, students watching a video, you can embed that video right here. So you would click on that and then you could either search YouTube or you could paste the YouTube URL of the video. So if you participated in our digital breakout on Institute Day, that was just a Twilight Zone intro that we grabbed the URL for. So this is just starting back with a clean slate here. The types of questions that you're going to ask that will be your digital locks will be short answer questions. And to add a short answer question, you would click on the add question button. And here is where you can put in the type of lock that it is. So if you're simulating a word lock or you're simulating a digit lock, here's where you can kind of indicate to the students what type of lock that you're using. So you saw things in our breakout that were like three digit lock. Um, and this would be a short answer question. So here is where I would want to do a couple things. If this is a three digit lock, that means it's going to be a three number answer. I would need to first require the question. That's really important. So you want to toggle on required. And second, in order to get the exact answer that I want, I want to click on these three little buttons and choose data validation. And here is where I can put in exactly what I want that number to be. So first of all, if it's a digit lock, it's going to be a number. And then I would want to make this equal to, and then if my answer was 424, for example, I would put that in. And then I would want to include some custom error text to indicate to the student, no, you don't have the correct answer. So nope, not it try again. This can say whatever you want it to say, so if you need to give them a hint here, that's okay. Um, but I wouldn't give away too much information in a hint. So that's all you need to do to set up sort of a lock question. I'll show you what a word one would look like. So I'm going to add another question and I would say something like four letter word lock. And again, short answer, always requiring and turning on data validation. 
And here, the text needs to contain and then the exact answer. Um, some things to be aware of, on the iPad when they type in text, it's usually gonna capitalize the first letter and it's tricky to turn that off. So sometimes what we do is make the clue all caps and you can even tell them, like any of the word locks are gonna be all caps. So if this was, um, the answer was a four letter word lock love, I would wanna add my answer text. So custom error text there and then they would need to type in the word love in all caps. If you need to, again, go back to that title and description, which is that little text. You can give them a little text clue. I'm just gonna move that right above the word lock. And so that's what this would look like for the student. Now you can add as many of these locks on to the form as you want. So it's all about how many clues that you're including. If you're playing a game that's already published by Breakout EDU and you're adapting it for digital, then you would just put as many clues in or as many questions in as there are physical locks. So you could have 10 on here if you want. It's up to you how you want to do it. Um, eventually, they're going to need to submit. They will not be able to submit this form unless they have all of the answers correct. So I'm going to add one more so you can see what this looks like. So here I have three clues and I've just told my students um, word locks are all caps. So this is my editing of this form. Notice that when I change this title, it will change the name of the form for you. If you want to preview this and see what this will look like for students, you click the little eyeball. And here, this is what students are gonna see. So here I could put in any number and it's gonna tell me no, that's not it, try again. So I do have to have the exact answer. If the answer is correct, you will not get the error text and you can move on. So if I am typing in the correct answers, I will get there, but if I am not, and I try to click submit, I won't be able to submit. So they do have to have all the answers correct and then they are able to submit the form. So once they submit the form, then um, that's sort of the breaking out. So you could put in on your finish page some custom things. So here is the questions. You kind of saw what the preview looked like. Let's talk about then what it looks like when you actually give this to the students. So you can give this to them a couple different ways. You could do it as a QR code. You could put it as a link in Schoology. But what you're doing is you are going to send it to them. One thing I would have you do is go to settings and I would make sure that you uncheck restrict to Glenbard High School District 87 users. You're really not collecting any data about who's accessing this form. So it's just another layer for them to have to sign into Google Drive to do this. So I don't think it's necessary for you to actually have them sign in. I would uncheck that box. It's checked by default and then save. Then you can click on send. And here is where you can grab that link. So this is send via email. We almost never use that we want to send via link. So right here is where we're going to grab that link. You can shorten the URL and you can copy that link. You can either click copy or you can command C or control C on your PC. And then that link can be pasted into Schoology. Again, it can be pasted onto a little clue sheet that you print out that they would type in that link. Or you can go to a website like QR Stuff which will allow you to generate a QR code. So QR Stuff is a great website. If it pops up with a little pop-up message, just click skip. You should never pay for QR codes, that everything should be free. Paste in your URL and hit return. See this little subscriber thing, no thanks, just click no thanks. And then notice it downloads a QR code, so I can hit download QR code. It is actually downloading into my ThoughtSpace. And here is my QR code. It's just an image file that can be printed so I could drag it onto a Google Doc or onto a Word document and print that out. Uh, you can put that QR code on whatever you want to put it on. And that just is a link to the form. So um, just another way for kids to access that form. One of the things we did when we presented at Institute is we broke our digital form, our digital locks, into two parts. So you had to solve a few locks first and then you could go back and got, get some instructions. Once you so solve those, you went on to another page to get more instructions. So if you are interested in doing something like that, you're going to create what's called a section. So you want to make sure your cursor is on the last question of the first part, and you're going to click on Add Section. 
And here you have kind of a second page. So they have to get through the first page and then they can get to the second page. So maybe this is part two and you can put in some text. Again, you can do add title and description if you need to put in any descriptive text. You can still embed images and videos and you can add more locks or more digital clues in this section. Again, you're always going back to the format of short answer and you're always going to require and choose data validation depending on the type of clue that you have. And one last little piece to just kind of make it fun is to um, click in the settings and go to presentation. And this is where your confirmation message can be sort of the congratulations. And you could even paste in like a web address for a video or something like that. So like we used the celebration cool in the gang YouTube video as our sort of congratulations video when they got here. You don't have to do that, um, but this is, you could put even like come up to the front for a treat if you wanted to give them a treat or you want to give them a homework pass or whatever it is that you want to do to celebrate the fact that they broke out. You can put that in the confirmation message. It's very restricted in terms of what you um, have the option to put in here. You can't put a whole lot of text, you can't embed an image, but you can put a link and you can put a little bit of text. So that then when they get that, um, I'll just show you what that looks like in preview. And I'm just gonna put in my answers and I'm gonna submit. So now I have congratulations come up to the front. So that's what that looks like. And last but not least, you can make your form pretty. So if you've got this default purple and you're fine with it and you don't really wanna think about it, then great, don't think about it. But if you wanna change it up, you can go to color palette and you've got other colors that you can pick from. This is like a really serious pink. Uh, you also have some image options. So if I click on this little image icon, I can go in and I can choose from any one of these pre-made illustrations, or I can even upload my own photo. So if I click on upload photos, I can put my own picture that's gonna be sort of that header image. Um, it does have to be a certain dimension. So you just wanna make sure that you're picking something that's gonna work. This even has a little video. And um, so then it's gonna make the form just kind of more interesting to the students. But it's not necessary to do that. Just know that it is an option. So grab that and that's what that would look like so when I preview that that image will show up there so you can do that if you want but certainly you don't have to you can just stick with the default if you have any questions about using Google Forms or breakouts or digital breakouts please don't hesitate to contact me Stephanie Wallace via first class or Diane uh, over at South and we will help you out thanks for coming to our session